Hi, I'm Italia and I've spent the last eight years working in media related fields. I come into contact with a lot of data through the nature of my work, which deals with media monitoring and social listening. A Sudoku solver can make use of search algorithms conjunctively to optimize the solving time and performance. An algorithm which can be used to solve a Sudoku puzzle is the backtracking algorithm. I'll begin by explaining how the backtracking algorithm works. Backtracking uses depth-first search that chooses values for one variable at a time and backtracks when a variable has no legal values left to assign. In backtracking algorithms, you try to build a solution one step at a time. If at some step it becomes clear that the current path that you are on cannot lead to a solution, you go back to the previous step and choose a different path. Once you exhaust all your options at a certain step, you go back. Think of a labyrinth or a maze. How do you find a way from an entrance to an exit? Once you reach a dead end, you must backtrack, but backtrack where? To the previous choice point. Backtracking is probably the most basic Sudoku solving strategy for computer algorithms. This algorithm is a brute force method which tries different numbers, and if it fails, it backtracks and tries a different number. With the backtracking algorithm in Sudoku, it assigns numbers to empty cells. We basically check that the same number is not present in the current row, current column, and current 3x3 subgrid. After checking for safety, we assign the number and recursively check whether this assignment leads to a solution or not. When a dead end is reached, the algorithm will leave the unsolvable cell blank for now and move back to the previous cell, and the value is then incremented by 1. This is repeated until the allowed value in the last 81st cell is discovered. Backtracking is a depth-first search because it will completely explore one branch to a possible solution before moving on to another branch. So let's try to run a depth-first search algorithm on the undirected path below. It has seven nodes that will end up needing to check or visit in the course of our graph traversal. We can arbitrarily choose any node to start with, but we'll choose zero as our starting parent node. And since we know that depth-first search is about finding whether a path exists or not between two nodes, we'll want to make sure that we can keep track of where we came from as we walk through our graph. In other words, we'll need to keep some sort of trail or breadcrumbs as we traverse. And this would be our visited column. For every node that we visit, we'll keep track of where we came from and use that to both backtrack when we need to. And also as an easy way to keep track of the path that we're constructing through the graph. When we choose node 0 as our parent node, we'll set a parent point reference. A simple way to keep track of which node we're currently searching tr through is by employing a stack data structure. The moment that we check node 0, we can push it right on top of our stack. And since our stack is empty, Node 0 is the only element that's actually in our stack. We'll mark it as visited. Next, we'll want to recursively visit every single node that's reachable from Node 0. And it doesn't matter which node we start with or which neighboring vertex we visit next. As long as the vertex is reachable and is one of the neighbors of 0. For example, we could arbitrarily choose to visit Node 3. It's a good pathfinding algorithm where it uses a stack S to keep track of the path between the start vertex and the current vertex. And as soon as destination vertex 7 is encountered, it returns the path as the contents of the stack. Backtracking depth first search is a great way to solve business problems that have a single solution. These problems are called constraint satisfaction problems, where a value is required to be selected from a given finite domain to be assigned to each variable in the problem so that all constraints relating to variables are satisfied. It can also be used to schedule jobs from given dependencies among some job tasks. In computer science, applications of this type arise in instruction scheduling, which is also known as topological sort, where certain priorities are applied to tasks for which there are dependencies and limited resources, such as constraints, thus the name constraint satisfaction problems. An example of an enterprise solution which backtracking depth first search can be applied to is resource management. Backtracking can be used in problems of an interconnected network for which there are limited resources and there is a need to find optimal solutions satisfying all operating constraints. Backtracking depth first search can be applied in business problems which have only one solution. And these can be scheduling, optimization solutions such as energy resource planning for city grids, office resource allocation, optimizing supply and demand problems through a topological sort of priorities. To summarize, Depth-first search is an algorithm for traversing a searching tree or a graph data structure. One starts at the root, selecting some arbitrary node as the root in the case of a graph, and explores as far as possible along each branch before backtracking. Here are some references where you can find more information on the topic. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye!